Hi there and welcome to a measurement video on the area of a parallelogram. It'll be based on a formula so let's just recap the uh, preparation for formula solutions. We should line, on line 1 we should put the formula itself uh, and line 2 we should look to substitute all the numbers in from the question and we should calculate our answer and then have a good think about what units we're going to use. This video is uh, exploring the area of a parallelogram so we'll be using area units let's have a look uh, area units so they'll be square units so it'll be square centimeters or square meters or square millimeters depending on what we're using in that particular question so that's our preparation here's a parallelogram here you'll notice that opposite sides are parallel as indicated by the two markings here and the single markings on the sides indicate that the, uh, the, the right hand and left hand slopey sides are parallel. And we have our height measured here at 90 degrees to the base. So that's the base down the bottom. And we're going to uh, want to measure a height that is perpendicular. That's the most useful one for us. It's the one that should go into our formula. So the area equals the base multiplied by that perpendicular height. It must be a height that's measured at 90 degrees to the base. Very important. If we call the base B for simplicity and the height H, we could make a slightly shorter version of this. Area equals base times height. So as long as that height's perpendicular, we can uh, use that fairly simple formula for the area of a parallelogram. Let's have a look at some numbers. We've got a base of 10 centimetres, we've got a perpendicular height of 8 centimetres. We'll just use our formula. That's our formula for the top line there. Area A equals B times H. Straight underneath we're going to put the numbers from this particular question. The base is 10, so that's going to go next, multiplied by the height, which is 8, and we have an area of 80. Now what units to use? That's the next question. For area, as I said before, we'll use square units. And uh, so it'll be square centimetres here. We've got centimetres here, so we'll be using square centimetres for our units. Okay, so we just put the formula on the first line, substituted all our numbers in, got our answer, and then selected the appropriate units. Okay, this one looks a bit different, but we have a base of 12.2 millimetres. We have a perpendicular height. Now don't be worried, don't get put off by the fact that that perpendicular height of the whole parallelogram is actually being measured outside the shape. That's okay. As long as that perpendicular height is 90 degrees to the base, even if it's not sitting on the base, it's still valid for the purposes of our formula. So there's our formula, area equals base times the perpendicular height, A equals B times H is our formula. Straight underneath we're going to put the numbers for this particular question in the right spots. B for base, 12.2, times H for height, 9. Get a final number answer of 109.8. Let's have a think about the units. We are using millimetres in the actual question. And because it's an area question, we're looking to use square units, so it'll be square millimetres that we'll be using. So don't be concerned that the perpendicular height is being measured outside the triangle itself. That's okay. Let's go with it. So in normal everyday formula questions, formula on the first line, substitute all the numbers in from the question for line two, calculate and then check our units carefully. We were using area, so we we're ca calculating area, so we are using square units. Alrighty, and we discovered that the area of a parallelogram formula is pretty straightforward as long as we use that perpendicular height. We have A equals base times height, area equals base times height, A equals B times H is the shorter version. Hope that helps. We'll be uh, seeing another video next on composite figures, so uh, stick around for that one. But that is how to find the area of a parallelogram. I hope that helps. And anytime you need some maths help or just want to revise, peterblakemaths.com. See you next time.